Hello everyone. I implore you to come see me if you're having troubles. I really want to help you out and keep you on track. This is a collection of just a, a quick review. This sheet here it was from the USA 829 Union Exam for Designers. It included all the paperwork that one needs for the exam. You have a copy of it. Here we have a couple of title blocks. We seem to have some confusion over what should be included. This is what should be included and there are some generic shapes and sizes to follow. You have a couple of title blocks in the book to choose from. Which one you use is entirely up to you. Um, and if there's information, please include it. Please remember that lettering is very important. I know it's a pain. But uh, take your time, make it clean and neat. And the more pictures, the less lettering you need to do. We want to make sure that we're using the proper sizes for our letters. And in this uh, graph, we have eighth inch for all of your notes, uh, 3 16th for more important stuff. But more importantly than the lettering are your line weights. We want to stick with appropriate line weight. And here we have a video example from the class. But I'm going to turn it, okay. which gives you a more consistent line as you're turning it because it keeps sort of the shop uses. We use two and a half inches. So I can draw a line like this for a one by three, and then I can also draw a line like this for the other side of the one by three. We move to half inch scale, we use the other end of the scale ruler, and in this case, the closest line here, I'm going to put this at zero, we get to a six there. We move this over so the six is on the end of the line, we have six foot zero, or uh, well, six foot zero, and then one, two, about two and a half. So that's six foot two and a half in half. So I'm going to take a vertical line here and move a vertical line over here and then draw my horizontal. Little arrows and then you're going to write your five foot six inch mark in there along with the apostrophe and the quotation mark for feet and inches. Okay. Uh, so that I have to do a line of the edge of a platform and then I need to go back and I need to do a dimension line. I can turn the pencil so I have the bevel helping me and there's my dimension line which is always thinner than my actual line. How to notate your dimensions is pretty important. We want them to look like these uh, and these. If you have something that's not for, to scale, please note it. Um, even if it's not to scale, you need to note to the dimension, even if you haven't drawn the item to scale. This piano, it just is thrown in here to point out dimension lines. These are all in your books. Next is a ground plan that has dimensions starting from center line and plaster line. Everything's measured from there. How far are the important landmarks? Here's some more. We have a sight line right here where the audience member on the extreme house right would be sitting and sight line lines indicating what they can see. They can see right off the stage here. They'll be able to see the backstage area over here. We've added a masking leg right there. Here we've got sight lines from the book showing sight line marks and what we can see through the windows and doors. If you have your proscenium here, you automatically know that your proscenium is going to be here. So, and if you my proscenium is that thick, I can get the measurement from right here. I don't need to remeasure, and I just draw my line all the way up like so. I did have to measure the height from here to here. Once I measured the height, I took my triangle and I gave myself a line there, just like that, and then gave myself a few of these um, hatching lines using the ruler like so. I can have my sight line mark from this drawing transfer straight over to this side and then I measured the height. We decided that it was about four feet off the floor about where someone's eyes would be. And the sight lines from that position line up from here to the proscenium arch, the top. We draw our sight line like so and we see that the audience member can see further up. So we stuck a border here. We hung the border here. Our border is ten feet tall and we wanted to have a certain clearance here. So I started from down here and went up here. And we know that this now blocks the audience from seeing anything up here in the fly system. Here and draw a line across to represent the border going straight across. So now I have it lined up here and I have it lined up here. So both of them, you'll see that there's some cross hatching to represent that these are solid objects. The wall here, the wall here, the floor here, the stage floor. 
Um, this here is an elevated pit. It's in the up position here, it's in the audience level position here, and it's down, down at the basement level down here. We want to include people on our section so that we have a The glass box exercise showed us how to deal with front views, right and left side views, rear views, top or plan views, and bottom views. If we have to get a close-up of our stairs to show the nosing in this example, we'd have to have a detail and a blow-up for the full size. The fireplace was a bit of a challenge, but here we have the top view, which shows a plan view uh, with the top of the mantel piece being solid outline with the dashed lines in it. This view is a close-up with much more detail as far as dimensioning goes, reverse and repeat, top view, side view, and so on. And here we have a close-up of how to deal with the hatch lines um, and how to see through a solid object and show what's beneath it. If you have some detail molding you need to draw, we have these details with the revolve section right on the facing of the flat and that can go in your front elevations. I'm not sure why I stuck a section in here but I must have felt it was important. It shows up again later but here we have a sight lines and a section view. The importance of notes cannot be stressed, though I don't want you to worry too much about notes. You're not going to be constructing something this intricate with these notes, but you do want to include notes about your ground plan, your section, your front elevations. Any information that you're not able to figure out how to draw, put it in a note. There's been some confusion with front compositional elevations, which that was, and this is a front elevation, which is this, the flats separated into separate units. The shop drawings. They want to include a rear view of all the flats together, which is about to come up. Um, how do they attach together? It's the rear side of the compositional elevation almost. It's a cross between that and the front elevation. The individual shop construction drawings, in this particular case an example of a flat a standard construction, you would include in your packet if you're drawing a lot of them. You don't need to draw a lot of them. If you're building a lot of them, you can draw one and make, have a note saying make it over and over again. And this is a collection of several of the same kind of flats. Your final project is your collection of all these different kinds of drawings uh, covered with a ground plan and a section. In this case, the ground plan from the final project chapter has all the dimensions you need to lay out your set on the floor, along with coding, that's what the letters are for, what do they stand for, and here's a final section from chapter 23. I hope this has been helpful.